Do you think starting a business means quitting your job and gambling everything? Because that's what most developers actually believe and it's exactly why they stay stuck in 9 to 5 jobs they hate even when they're overqualified, underpaid and frankly completely burned out. In this video, I'm going to show you the three biggest lies developers believe about starting a business, why these lies actually keep even the smartest engineers stuck, and how you can flip them so you can start building a $25,000 to $50,000 a month client business without quitting your job or wasting time on another doomed side project. For those of you who are new, welcome. I'm Bego, former NASA dev and Fortune 500 manager, walked away from it all to build my very own seven-figure consulting firm. Without funding, luck, nor virality. And now I help mid to senior level engineers build $25,000 to $50,000 a month client businesses without wasting time on another failed side project. Let's get straight into it. So the first lie that I want to talk about is quitting your job to start a business. Many software engineers, and I have spoken to already over about 1,100 of them at this current point in time, believe that they need to save some money for a rainy day or at least have four to six months of runway such that they can quit their job and commit fully to building a business. And frankly, I'm not going to say that's a bad idea or that it's wrong, but rather I'm going to say that that's unnecessary. You don't have to quit your job to build a business. Now, I did quit my job to build a business, but that is because I didn't know any better at the time that I took and I made that decision, that I took that step. In hindsight, I could have very well properly positioned myself to not only work at my nine to five, but also to build a business on the side. There is only one scenario in which I would say that you should wholeheartedly quit your job to build a business, and that is if you are not learning nor earning. A nine to five is good for only one of two things, learning and earning. If you're not doing any of these, you should very well quit your job. Meaning, if you're not learning anything new, if you're not growing as a person, nor are you really saving any money, you're living paycheck to paycheck, you should most definitely quit that job because it is frankly useless. And that's the only scenario where I would say you should quit to pursue a business uh, for most people. Of course, are there exceptions to the rule? Yes, but for most people, generally speaking, you don't have to go full nuclear mode and just quit your job, abandon everything to put time into a business. A business, all it really is at its core is solving problems at scale. And it doesn't require nearly, nearly as much, I want to say, time as people might think. It requires time doing the right things. So more than anything, business is about doing the right things. The 20% of the things that will get you 80% of the results. When people decide to dedicate, let's say, a full-time work week towards building a business, which in this case would be about 40 hours, a lot of that time is being spent on non-productive activity, such as coming out with the logo for the business or creating the website, those types of things, right? So not by nature high ROI activity. If you just focus on the high ROI activity of the business, right? So the offer, the marketing, the client relationships, the fulfillment, those types of things. If you focus on the highest ROI things, you can very well run a business part-time initially, at least starting off until it replaces your nine to five income, which then you can quit your nine to five to then fuel everything into the business. But starting off, please don't fall for the same old trap that everybody else falls into. You do not have to pull the plug on your nine to five immediately, have four to six months of runway and all that stuff to start a business. You can start a business right now from wherever, whenever, and what type of situation you are in as of this moment. And following up that, this is a perfect segue to the second lie, which actually has to piggyback off the first lie, because if the first lie has to do specifically with starting a business when you quit your job, well, the second one has to do with starting a business in general, and that is what you need to start a business. Most people think that they need a grand idea. They need the next big thing, the next Facebook, the next Google, the next Amazon. And frankly, this is the second biggest lie that is told. You do not need to invent something new. In fact, you don't need to even solve a big problem. You don't even need to have a big idea. You just need to solve a painful enough problem for a set amount of people to get what you want out of it, which for many people, it's having that freedom. So unless you are looking to be the next Elon Musk, unless you're looking to be the next Jeff Bezos, you do not have to worry about coming up with the next big thing, the next revolutionary idea that's going to change this world. Rather, you just focus, you just have to focus on a subset of people 
choose a very specific pain point that a few people are having and focus on solving that and getting really good at solving that specific problem. Because even what you might consider to be a quote unquote small problem can very well net you seven to eight figures in annually recurring revenue. Meaning that if you just care about the quote unquote financial freedom, you do not need to go out and build a multi-billion dollar business. Rather, you can get there with just a regular seven to eight figure business solving pretty much a plethora of problems. So it's not necessarily about the scope of the idea, but rather it's about how painful of a problem you're choosing to solve. So forget about it being a revolutionary idea, a new idea that nobody has ever done before. That might sound appealing, but more often than not, keep in mind there are 8 billion people in this world and we have existed for thousands of years already. Chances are, if you are thinking of something, somebody else has already thought of it as well. So it's not going to be a unique idea for 99.99% of the time. Meaning, if your idea has not come to fruition just yet, you need to research why that is the case. Has anybody tried it before? If yes, which most of the time it will be yes, why have they failed and what can you learn from it? More often than not, if an idea that you thought of has not been yet seen to be successful, it is probably not a good idea, meaning there is not enough market demand. In fact, some of the best ideas in the world, everybody copies them, right? Take a look at almost every single country you go to, every single business that you see in those countries, they're gonna have the staple businesses. The staple blue collar businesses solving the same exact problems, the staple software based businesses, right? Every single country everywhere in the world has staple businesses where people are having the same exact, same painful problem, day in, day out, and there are people who solve that problem day in and day out. So keep that in mind. It's not about how grand or unique of an idea you really have. In fact, I would even say for most individuals, that will only hurt you. Don't try to reinvent the wheel, just like in software, right? Don't try to reinvent the wheel. Use already existing tools to help you out. In a business environment, same exact thing. Don't try to think of this new crazy big idea. You can think of a problem, a painful enough pain point, and your uniqueness can come from the way you execute the solution to that pain point, or maybe the way you market it, the way you try to sell it. But the idea itself, the actual pain point, the problem itself, don't try to come up with something unique like that. Just stick to what's tried and true and simple and boring, because that is what actually works. Once again, for 99.9% .9 of cases, there are always exceptions to the rule, and there will always be exceptions to the rule. There will be the next you know, unicorn that might be born, but just understand that if you want whatever it is that you want, if it's not being Jeff Bezos or Nick being the next Elon Musk, you don't have to go down that path. So you don't have to choose the hard way out. There is an easier option. And following up, the third lie I want to talk about, and this has to do with pretty much almost all the software engineers that I've talked with, it's about sales, selling. Many software engineers have a very negative connotation of sales and they believe the lie that software engineers are not salespeople and sales is fishy, right? It's bad by nature. You're lying to people, you're manipulating people. That is actually the furthest thing from the truth. Actual sales, true sales is all about serving other people because what is a business? It's solving problems at scale for various kinds of people. If you are a doctor, and a patient comes into your office and you spot, God forbid, a tumor on them, you can't stay quiet and let them walk out of your office. No, it is your duty to talk to them, warn them, and guide them on how they can best proceed to solve the problem that they're having. Likewise, if you are running a business, it is your duty as a business owner to help those that you can genuinely help. So if you spot a problem and you genuinely believe you can help that person, it is your duty to sell to them right? It's your obligation to sell to them. And if you do not, you are actually doing them more harm than good. You are now being selfish and you're not being dutiful. You're not being a proper citizen. I know that might be a new line of thinking, but that is actually how you have to approach it because in many cases, that is exactly how things work, especially in things such as healthcare and law, where the stakes might be a lot higher than in a regular business environment. So keep in mind, sales at its core is about serving people. Just because you might have had bad experience with other salespeople or just because you've seen Wolf of Wall Street, sales is not fishy, nor is it manipulative, nor is it scammy, nor is it any of these things. True sales at its core 
is a good thing and it's about serving people and helping people in need, right? You're just solving problems at scale and using sales as a method to do that. So always think of the doctor-patient analogy in the back of your mind anytime you are met with the sales argument. Understand, you are a doctor. The person in front of you is a patient. If, this is a very big if, if you can genuinely help that person get to a better position than they are in right now, it is your duty to sell to them, okay? It is your obligation to sell to them because you will do them good, right? And just because you take money from them doesn't mean you have to feel guilty about it, but rather it is an equivalent exchange. You do something good for them, they do something good for you. Both sides are happy. It's a win-win situation. And that's the beauty of business. So to tie everything together, the three lines that really helped most developers back that I talk with, and these are the lines that really just keeps them from building a business and just going all in into it. One is you having to quit your job. You don't, you can build it on the side. Very easy to do, right? Remember, Pareto principle, 20% of the things that you should do to get 80% of the results. So forget about the logo, the website initially, right? Focus on the three things. The actual pain point slash problem, your customer, right? Who it actually is, and of course, your offer. What are you actually offering them? Those three things, 20% of the tasks you focus on will drive 80% of the results. Then, when it comes to the actual time of, well, starting the business itself, do not think about doing something crazy big or think of a very unique idea. Just choose a very simple, boring pain point that a lot of people might have, right? And focus on that. Don't even care about the total addressable market, Nozan Tam, okay? You don't have to worry about any of that until you are thinking of, I would say, more than $100 million a year. Because most problems that you see on a day-to-day -day basis, if they already have competitors, if there's already a market for it, you can very easily get to seven to eight figures with the snap of a finger. That was a bad snap, let me try it again. With the snap of a finger. Don't worry about total addressable market. Don't worry about having a big idea, a unique idea. There's exceptions to the rule. There will be people that will come in later years that will come up with these unique ideas, but you have to base it off what you want. If you want to be the next Bezos, the next billionaire, the person who changes the world, if you genuinely believe and have these aspirations, then sure, you can think of unique ideas or unique things to take on. But if you just want the freedom that comes with owning a business, the financial time and location freedom, and you don't care about the monetary aspect of things nearly that much, you can get away with a seven to eight figure business and live the life that you wanna live very easily on most pain points, okay? And of course, not, last but not least, it's about sales. Sales is a good thing. So remove from your mind that sales is bad, sales is fishy, or that software engineers can't be salesmen. All sales really is, is communication. First step of communication is not actually speaking, but rather listening. So for you to be a good salesperson, for you to do actual good, for you to serve people, you first have to listen to them. You have to listen to them to understand what pain points do they have, what problems do they have, such that you can help alleviate that specific pain point, that specific problem. And in the back of your mind, always remember, you are the doctor, they are the patient. If you can genuinely help them and you do spot a problem and you don't say anything, that is a bad thing. That is being manipulative and that is being a bad person. Because if you can genuinely help somebody who is in need, then you should almost always help them. That has been the quick little video that I wanted to make. As always, thank you for watching and have a good one.